Hi everyone, thanks for checking out another video. Today is slightly different. This is actually going to be a tutorial of how to play the warmth. This has been requested by Richard Jensen. So I'm going to go through all of the riffs and notes and, and different chords that are in this song. I do have another video where I go through the pedals and I do a cover of this song, which I will link up here if you haven't seen that yet. But that was recorded quite a long time ago now and I have updated some pedals and I've changed some settings and things. So I will talk about those first before we get into the riffs. Now, listening to the recorded version of this track, it's incredibly clean. Before I was using my Fender Strat that has single coil, so that's a bit of a biteier sound anyway. This time I'm using my Ibanez RG Prestige with Obviously humbuckers in it, that helps smooth out the sound. So let's quickly go through the pedals I'm using. I don't want to spend too much time on this. I'm going to write all of the exact settings that I'm using down in the description below. And there are also affiliate links there too. So if you want to pick up any of this gear and you use those links, I will get a very small commission for that too. So, and that would be hugely appreciated. Or well, the main effect on this song is the, obviously the delay part. Now I haven't deviated too much from the original settings that I used. All of these effects this time around are going into the front of the amp. I have a whole video showing you how to lay out your pedals to sound like mic. I'll link that up here as well in case you want to check that out. And this time around I'm not using any reverb whatsoever, it's just delay going on. In the previous video I was using a TC Electronic Vibra clone to get the rotary type sounds. This time around I'm actually using a new pedal, it's the Strymon Lex. Moving on from there I'm using the MXR Phase 90, this is for the chorus parts. And lastly pedal wise for the bridge section I'm using the Boss PH2 which is the super phaser. So that's it effects wise. Uh, I'm gonna change the camera angle now and we'll actually talk about the riffs and the notes that are being played in this song. So let's dive straight into the intro riff of this song and the verses, kind of the main riff throughout the song. That's starting up at the 19th fret on the B string and you're playing this to start with, this bend. So you're bending up about a half step and releasing and then playing the 17th fret on the B string. Then from there, we're going down to the G string on the 19th fret, and you play back and forth between the G and the B string, so the 19th and the 17th, and it should sound like this. Then we're coming down to the G string on the 17th fret, and then you finally come down another half step onto the G of the 16th and then you're playing this octave on the 19th of this note. So you're playing the octave at the 19th on the E. So all put together. And on this note, on the high E, I like to play it with my middle finger here uh, and the pick as well. So I'm playing the two together in this kind of motion, hybrid picking. So if you watch my fingers, So pick with your middle finger and then the pick comes down onto the 16th. You don't have to do that, you can use your pick. I just find it helps so you haven't got to cross over those strings, your finger's right there and you can get a cleaner note then. So with the effects on, so this has got the rotary effect and the delay on and so it sounds like this. got that slight pause there as well so you're not rushing straight through to that note you've got so it's a slightly slightly longer note there you're, you're holding it for a little bit longer then from there we take the rotary effect off and we put the good old MXR phase 90 on and you are playing Again, if I turn the effects off, this is what you've got. So you're playing just a, a, a five chord each time, basically. So here's the root note. Here's the fifth of the chord. So we're starting on an E 
here's an E, this is the E root, and this is the fifth, the B. And again, I'm playing those with my middle finger and the pick combined, so you're grabbing both notes at the same time, so you're doing this kind of motion together. So as I grab here, I'm playing these two with my finger and the pick. Again, you could, you could do it with your pick again, um, but I find for accuracy so that you, you don't have accidental notes ringing out or anything like that, you can just play with your pick and your fingers. So going from E down to C here, just a, a C5 chord again, here's the root note C, and a, a, the fifth being the G, down to A G, uh, and the, the D note being the fifth, so G5, and then down a whole octave to that E chord again. Again, if I put the effects back on, this is where they really come into their own because they, they sort of repeat on top of each other so it sounds like you're playing more than you actually are. So that's kind of the intro and the chorus. So they go round and round and round many times in this song. Then the next part out of that is the bridge part. That is with the delay still on, take off all the other effects and put on the PH2 and you get this really cool sweeping sound which is like this. <laughs> And simply, again, if I turn the effects off, so that's just the delay and the super phaser working its magic. That is just seven to nine on the D string, and you're just pulling off, um, or nine to seven, should I say. So you're just pulling off from the, the ninth here. <laughs> repeat that around and around and around until if I put the effects back on again you then hit whatever distortion pedal you have or from your amplifier or whatever you prefer to use and you go into this <laughs> So that again, if I play that um, without the effects on. All of that is the same. So again, it's just pull offs from the ninth on the D string uh, to the seventh on the D string. And then once the distortion comes on, it kind of carries around on that for a little bit. And then you've got this slide up. So you've got. So you're sliding up there to the ninth. Again, you could use your first finger and then you're, you're hammering and pulling off with your second finger onto the tenth. I quite like sliding back there as well. You almost get this, that sort of feel to it, which is quite nice. And it's literally as simple as that. Just delay the PH2 uh, with that big sweeping setting on the mode two, and then hit it with some gain um, when that part comes in, then you're adding up to that. 
And then the very finishing part, it just sits on um, the tenth to the ninth. So. And then we're into, it's another chorus essentially, but I almost feel it's like part of the bridge. Um, and there's some cool stuff going on there, which we'll talk about. So from, from there, you turn off the uh, PH2 superphaser and the delay, you keep your distortion on and you have. <laughs> So let's talk about those chords. I'll turn the distortion off for now. So that is going into basically a big E chord. Just all octaves of E. E, E, E. Um, I'm not playing, I'm muting the D string here with my first finger, the pad of my first finger, so only. Those three notes are ringing out. And then by adding your middle finger up onto the E string here, that's a C note, so that makes it a C major. There's the third of the chord, becomes the E, and you're just adding in the octave of the E there as well. And then from there, we're coming down to a G add nine. Really big sounding chord. You'll see Mike do this stretch a lot, certainly in the uh, the kind of make yourself morning view era, or even in science too. Um, really nice sounding chord. So there you've got, there's your G note. There's the fifth of the chord being a D. And then from here, you've got an A, which if you know your major scale, the A is the second of a, a G major. So when you go up a full octave, that makes it the ninth of the chord as well. You've got a really nice spread triad there. Lovely sound. And then you're going to this really big E chord. Now, I think in the cover I played before, it's just a standard E power chord, which is fine really. It's just kind of any E chord you like. Um, there I was adding in the B, um, the fifth and playing the, the B and the E open there as well, so you get this big, big sound. Then from there, um, you could keep playing that part if you wanted to before the very last chorus, or uh, there's a really nice little part that is this riff. That is repeated, but an octave lower, and I believe it's still with the rotary effect on it. So that is played like this. So that little part, I'll do it on a, a less distorted sound. So we're bending up from the seventh fret on the B. Same bend. Exactly the same riff. But starting from the seventh fret. So you're going seven on the B to the fifth on the B, down to the seventh on the G. Down to the fifth on the G, down one fret further to the fourth on the G, and then playing that octave on the high E of the seventh fret. So again, slowly through. But this time round, he's adding a few embellishments. So you're you're bending up, bending that note down or up, and then playing that kind of octave section um, like four times. And then from there, add on your delay once more, and then you're sliding all the way back up to the 19th fret to play that exact same riff. And you literally cycle that all the way around until the end of the song. 
And that is it. If you are after the tabs for this song, they are on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.